So in this video I'd like to talk a little bit about contour integration, specifically using the technique of contour integration to evaluate a definite integral such as this. So I've got a definite integral and typically we'd evaluate this using a trig substitution and we know this evaluates to the arctangent of x evaluated at 0 and infinity. We know that evaluates to pi over 2. But suppose I want to do this integral using contour integration instead. Well, the first thing I've got to do is I've got to choose a contour that will capture the information I need to do this integral. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a semicircular contour. So let's draw that. So this is the complex plane. And I'm going to draw a semicircular contour. So like this. So there's my semicircular contour. It's got a radius of r. So I've got a point r here and a point minus r here. That's the edges of the, or the ends of the semicircle, if you like. Um, and it's traversed in the anti-clockwise sense. In other words, it's positively oriented. So you traverse it like this. It's also centered at the origin of radius r. I'm going to label the arc of this semicircular contour as gamma sub r. So gamma sub r is the arc of this semicircle. So that's my contour. Its diameter lies on the real axis, so from minus r to r. That line segment lies on directly on the real axis. And I'm going to call this contour c. By the way, I'll take r to be greater than 1. So r is greater than 1. And you'll see why I do that later. Now I've got to choose a suitable function to integrate over. And in this case, I'm just going to choose f of z to be 1 over 1 plus z squared. 1 over z squared plus 1. Now it's important to note that the function I choose won't always be the same as my integrand. For instance, if I had a sine term in the numerator, I'd probably use an exponential function instead, but we'll get to that later. So what do I have? Well, by construction, I have that. Let's see. I've got that the contour integral over c of my function f of z dz, that's equal to the integral over uh, the real axis minus r to r, so this directed line segment along the real axis of my function f of z dz plus the integral over my arc. So the integral over gamma r of f of z dz. So in essence I've essentially traversed my contour. So this contour is made up of two pieces. It's made up of um, a line segment that goes from minus r to r and then from r back to minus r using this arc, which I've called gamma r. And I've noted this using my sum of the integrals. So that's what this sum of the integrals means. And when I sum these integrals, I get this contour integral on the left. So the integral I'm actually interested in, in is this one. This is the definite integral. Well, it, it's only from minus r to r, but when I let r go to infinity, I'll get something that closer resembles my integral. So let's look at the integral on the left first. Let's deal with this one. Well, first we're going to find the poles of f of z. So that is, where does the denominator of this function vanish? So the denominator of this function is z squared plus 1. So z squared plus 1. So that's equal to 0, i.e. it vanishes, if and only if z squared is equal to minus 1. And we know that z squared is equal to minus 1 if i, if, uh, sorry, z is equal to i or minus i. So z equals i or minus i. So these are the poles of my function. So if I look back at my contour, so this is my contour, I now have poles at i and minus i. So this is why I took r to be greater than 1, because if r was equal to 1, then it would pass through my pole and that would be a problem. So I've got, the con I've got a pole at i and a pole at minus i. And you'll notice that only the pole at z equals i lies inside c, my contour, while the pole at z equals minus i doesn't. So I only need to find the residue at z equals i. So let's find the residue at z equals i. So I've got to find the residue at the point i. So the residue of my function at the point i, this is the notation I'll be using, uh, that's equal to the limit as z approaches i of z minus i times f of z, which of course is the limit as it approaches i, of z minus i times my function. My function was 1 over 1 plus z squared, so that's 1 over uh, z squared plus 1. But we found the uh, roots of the denominator, the poles, 
so we can actually do some cancellation. This is the same as limit of z approaches i of z minus i all over z minus i times z plus i. And I've got a factor of z minus i on the top and the bottom. So this is just equal to the limit as z approaches i of 1 over z plus i. But this limit is pretty easy to calculate. I can just substitute in i and I'll get that to be 1 over 2i. So this is uh, the residue at the pole z equals i. Then by the residue theorem, the contour integral, that is the integral uh, over c of my function f of z dz, that's equal to 2 pi i times the sum of these residues. So the sum of these residues is just 1 over 2i, because that's just that's the only residue I have. So it's just 1 over 2i. So that's 2 pi i over 2i, and I've got a factor of 2i on the top and the bottom, those cancel, leaving me with pi. So now I've dealt with the integral on the left. I've now got to deal with this uh, peculiar integral over here, where we're integra integrating over the arc, gamma sub r. And to deal with that, I've got to use something called the estimation lemma. So let's use the estimation lemma. Well, moreover, what does the estimation lemma say? Well, the estimation lemma says that the absolute value of my integral over this curve, gamma sub r, f of z dz, that's less than or equal to the length of that contour, or the length of that path, so the length of gamma sub r, times the maximum value of the absolute value of f of z, where z varies along gamma sub r, um, and that's what the estimation lemma says. So let's look at the length of gamma sub r. Well, I had a semicircle here, and the, the semicircle had radius r. So if this were a full circle of radius r, it would have circumference 2 pi r. So the circumference, or just the length of the arc of the semicircle, is just half of that. So half of 2 pi r is pi r. So the length of that semicircle, not including the diameter, is pi r. So this is equal to pi r. So now let's deal with the uh, this maximum thing. So how do we do that? Well, I know that f of z is 1 over z squared plus 1. So what's the absolute value of 1 over z squared plus 1? So this is the, the same thing as the length of gamma sub r. Actually, let's just write pi r, just for simplicity. So that's pi r times the maximum where z belongs to gamma sub r. z varies along this arc of 1 over the absolute value of z squared plus 1. So now what I'll do is I'll use the triangle inequality. So triangle inequality says that the absolute value of z squared plus 1, that's greater than or equal to the absolute value of z squared minus 1. But as z varies along the uh, arc of my semicircle, the absolute value of z is just equal to r because every single point is a distance r from the origin, no matter where you are on the arc of this semicircle. So it turns out that the absolute value of z is just r. And if the absolute value of z is r, then the absolute value of z squared is r squared. So that's r squared minus 1. But then that means that 1 over the absolute value of z squared plus 1, flipping the inequality, is less than or equal to uh, 1 over r squared minus 1. So now if you put everything together, substituting for the maximum value, what I end up with is that the absolute value of the integral over C, of, oh, it shouldn't be over C, that should be over gamma sub r. So over gamma sub r of f of z dz, that is less than or equal to pi r, that was the length of gamma, uh, times 1 over r squared minus 1. So that's over r squared minus 1. Now, I want to eventually let r go to infinity, so let's let r go to infinity. So, as r goes to infinity, what happens? Well, the degree of r in the denominator is 2, and in the numerator is 1. So this thing has to go to 0. So as r goes to infinity, this limit evaluates to 0. So that deals with this integral. So how do we now piece this information all together? Well, in my original equation, I had that the absolute value uh, well not the absolute value, the integral over c of my function f of z dz, that was integral, that was equal to the integral from minus r to r of f of z dz, 
plus the integral of a gamma sub r f of z dz. Well, if I let r go to infinity, what happens? Well, I know that this integral is just going to go to uh, the integral from minus infinity to infinity, because if I let r go to infinity, then I, I get the whole real line. So that's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of z dz. So what does this become? Well, we know that this vanishes when r goes to infinity. So this is just 0 as r goes to infinity. And by the residue theorem, we discovered that this integral was just pi. So this was pi. So now we can now use this to evaluate our original definite integral. So what have we got? Well, this says that pi is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of z. Well, f of z was 1 over z squared plus 1. But my function along the real axis uh, only varies with x. So y doesn't change at all. If z was a complex number x plus i y, then the only thing that's varying is x. So this is just uh, dx of x squared plus 1. But 1 over x squared plus 1 is an even function. So that means that I can do this. This is equal to twice the integral from 0 to infinity, halving the range of integration over x squared plus 1. And if I divide both sides by 2, what do I get? Well, I get pi over 2 is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of dx over x squared plus 1. So that's how I tackle a definite integral using contour integration.